Proper, concise, and clear communications are essential to a tug and tow operation that is safe, efficient, and error-free. When in the act of towing or moving an aircraft, it is absolutely critical to get it right. Deviating from standard operating procedures, committing unintentional errors, or hurrying through procedures or cutting corners can lead to potentially life-threatening situations. In this section, we will examine the common communications protocols you can expect during operations within a non-movement area or operations involving towing an aircraft to a taxi lane and within a movement area, such as towing an aircraft across active runways. Taxiing an aircraft as an alternative to towing by authorized mechanics in the cockpit is another method of moving aircraft. We'll also present a glossary of phraseology you'll need to know, as well as the International Civil Aviation Organization's phonetics alphabet used to reduce confusion that may result from similar sounding letters and numbers. Situational awareness, or being focused on the job at hand and aware of your surroundings, is one of the most important aspects of your job you'll need to master in order to cultivate and maintain a safe and professional operating environment. Communications, as it relates to situational awareness, can be thought of in two ways. One, visual communications. Making sure you have a visual connection with your wing walkers. Ensuring there are no nearby obstructions or potential hazards in the ramp area before pushback. Scanning the area behind the aircraft and the area into which you will be moving for any possible hazards and making sure you're not distracted during tug operation and two, audio communications. Making sure you're communicating with the pilot or in some cases with air traffic control. Ensuring you know proper phraseology and understand air traffic control communications and the proper responses. And when appropriate, practice effective listening watch or attentively listening to radio communications for your specific instructions and generally being aware of what's happening around you through the communications being delivered to other aircraft and tugs. The movements and positions of other aircraft and vehicles may have an effect on your tow operation. It is imperative you understand where you fit into the big picture. This also means that cell phone and MP3 player use during tug operations is strictly prohibited. A third key aspect of situational awareness is being thoroughly familiar with your airport. You need to know the designations of your airport's runways, taxiways, hold areas, ramps, and other special areas. These areas and designations are critical to safe movement and will be part of any communications you will receive. You need to be confident you know where you're going when instructed to do so. Study your airport's diagram and be aware of any changes, like closed runways or construction activity. Knowing your airport's layout and instructions is crucial to any safe tug operation. Simply put, an airport taxiway or runway is no place to get lost. Here are some other important points regarding communications you must remember. Remember that as a tug operator, communication with air traffic control may be second-hand information. Air traffic control is communicating with the pilot in the cockpit, and the pilot is relaying that communication to you. However, if equipped with a communications radio, the tug will have direct contact with air traffic control. In some cases in which an aircraft is being towed to a hangar, a cockpit observer, a mechanic, or even another tug operator may be at the controls in the cockpit. So it's imperative that you are communicating properly and understand all instructions relayed to you. Do not assume anything, especially that you will receive clearance to proceed. Stop and wait for instructions at all hold positions. You should be knowledgeable in all procedures, but remember that anything can change at any time, particularly with regard to communicating instructions. In other words, just because you performed a certain function many times before without incident, a pushback from a gate or pulling an aircraft from a certain hangar, for example, doesn't mean that procedure won't change due to some circumstance. Always pay strict attention to your communications every single time. Always repeat air traffic control instructions back to air traffic control exactly as you heard them. This alerts air traffic control that you not only heard the communication, but that you heard it correctly. 
You can never go wrong by parroting or repeating back what air traffic control says to you. If you are unsure of the communication, your position on the airfield, or you're unsure that air traffic control knows where you are, always ask for clarification before proceeding. If you're unsure where you are on the airfield, always ask for clarification. Signs and markings may become difficult to see due to a number of circumstances. Do not be afraid to talk to air traffic control if you're unsure about anything. And do not assume that air traffic control is watching you at all times and will catch your mistake. Stop, do not proceed until you are cleared and certain of your direction or route. Remember the ABCs of communication, accuracy, brevity, and clarity. Air traffic control will use instructions that are exact and with minimal verbiage. You should do the same. Do not clog the communications channels with unnecessary chatter or overly complicated responses. When you're given clearance to proceed, begin moving immediately as you repeat back the instruction, unless you're unclear. Air traffic control will expect you to execute your instructions immediately and will listen for your response. In non-movement areas, air traffic control does not control the movement of aircraft, tugs, or ground vehicles. Movement in this area is at the discretion of individual operators and pilots. Management of non-movement areas falls under the jurisdiction of the airport authority. Air traffic control may suggest movement and may provide additional information to the pilot to help with movement decisions, such as the possibility of encountering other moving aircraft, ground vehicles, or obstacles unseen to the pilot. At some larger or congested airports, a ramp controller may control ramp traffic. In movement areas, air traffic control has control over all movements and strict communication protocols are in place. Let's first examine a communications example taking place in a non-movement area. In this case, a standard pushback from a gate. Remember that as a tug operator, communication with air traffic control may be secondhand information relayed by the pilot or whoever is positioned in the cockpit, such as a mechanic or another tug operator. However, if equipped with a communications radio, the tug will have direct contact with air traffic control. Once a tug plugs into the aircraft, communication is established. When all aircraft turnaround operations are complete, the outer safety perimeter envelope is clear and the aircraft is ready for pushback, the pilot will advise air traffic control of their intention to push back. Ground, Southwest 234, ready for pushback. Air traffic control will respond to the pilot or alert the pilot to a potential conflict, such as another aircraft pushing back or an incoming aircraft. So it's 234, Rio Ground, push back your discretion advisory taxi. The pilot relays this instruction to the tug operator, who begins the pushback. When the aircraft has been pushed back into position, the tug will disengage. When the tug is clear and the aircraft is powered and ready to go, the pilot will alert air traffic control. Ground, Southwest 234, ready to taxi. Air traffic control will respond with clearance or other instructions. So that's 234, runway 16 right, taxi via Alpha. Southwest 234, runway 16 right, taxi via Alpha. At this point, the tug operation is complete and the team should immediately return to a waiting position at the ramp. Now let's examine a hypothetical communications example that involves moving an aircraft to a maintenance hangar and across active parallel runways. Depending on the aircraft, there should be a tug operator and a cockpit operator whose presence is required to monitor communications and guard brakes if necessary. If the tug is equipped with a communications radio, air traffic control communications will be direct. Otherwise, communications may go through the cockpit and relayed to the tug operator. The tug operator, designated tug one in our example, should know the location of his destination and the various routes prior to movement. Air traffic control will determine which route our tug will follow. Any direction to or from a tug will always include the designation of the tug to reduce confusion. 
The tug designation is determined by the tug, not air traffic control. A first communication to air traffic control might be... Tug 1 at wash rack, request taxi to maintenance hangar. Air traffic control would respond... Tug 1, read on ground. Proceed via Lima Hold short right 16 right. The tug operator will repeat this communication back to air traffic control exactly as it was said to him. Tug 1, Reno ground, proceed via Lima, hold short runway 16 right. If the tug operator was correct in his readback, air traffic control will not respond. Air traffic control will only respond if the tug operator did not repeat the command or repeated it incorrectly. The tug operator proceeds on taxiway Lima. When he comes to the hold line before runway 16 right, he stops and awaits instructions. When the area is clear and ready for movement, air traffic control will say to the tug operator, Tug 1, cross line 16 right, hold short right 16 left. The tug operator will repeat the command back to air traffic control exactly as instructed. Tug 1, cross runway 16 right, hold short runway 16 left. And immediately start moving. The tug operator proceeds across runway 16 right to the next hold position and stops, since our illustration uses parallel runways common to many airports. Air traffic control may give clearance to keep going, but you should never assume you will get clearance and always prepare to stop at any hold position. Listen carefully to air traffic control instructions. Assume you do not have clearance and stop at all hold position markings. When it's clear to move, air traffic control will give an instruction to proceed. Tug 1, cross runway 16 left, taxi to the hangar via Charlie. The instruction is repeated back to air traffic control and Tug 1 proceeds to the hangar. Tug 1, cross runway 16 left, taxi to the hangar via Charlie. Air traffic control may ask the tug operator to report clear when the tail of the aircraft is clear of the runway safety area. Some other points you need to remember. It is imperative that you know your airport's layout by studying the airport diagram and carry a copy of the diagram with you for navigation reference. Practice diligent listening watch by monitoring all radio communications. You should not proceed based on a conditional clearance you may hear as it may be confusing. A conditional clearance is a clearance issued by air traffic control that becomes effective after a specific condition has been met. These include instructions to proceed after a departing aircraft or lining up behind specific aircraft. Always wait for your instruction, which will include your tug designation. You may hear an all hold command, such as, Attention all vehicles, hold your position. In this case, stop immediately and wait for instructions. This command may mean there is an emergency occurring somewhere on the airfield or some incident that necessitates movement of all vehicles to cease. Air traffic control is controlling and monitoring numerous aircraft and vehicles. If you are in a non-movement area, do not ask for air traffic control instructions unless you absolutely need them. For example, if you are towing out of a hangar, do not ask for air traffic control instructions until you are at the boundary line. In review, practice effective situational awareness. Do not assume anything, especially receiving instructions to proceed. Always repeat commands back to air traffic control and ask for clarification if in doubt. Practice the ABCs of communication. Practice diligent listening watch during tug operations. And always carry a copy of your airport's diagram. Air traffic control uses a standard glossary of phraseology to help ensure universal understanding and compliance with surface operations and commands. The following are some commonly used terms that you will likely encounter. You should be as familiar with them as with your normal conversation. Acknowledge. Let me know that you've received my message. Advise intentions. Tell me what you plan to do. Affirmative. Yes. Expedite. Used by air traffic control when immediate compliance with a command is required to avoid the development of an imminent situation, such as an incursion. 
Because of the handling characteristics of an aircraft in tow, a tug operator's ability to comply with the command to expedite may be compromised. It is imperative that if a tug driver cannot safely comply with any air traffic control command, he should respond with unable. Final. Commonly used to mean that an aircraft is on the final approach course or is aligned with the landing area. Hold for. Followed by a command such as clearance, taxiing aircraft, etc. It means to stay in place where you are currently located. How do you hear me? A question relating to the quality of the radio transmission or to determine how well the transmission is being received. Immediately. Synonymous with expedite. Immediate compliance with the command is required. Negative. No. Or permission is not granted. Or that is not correct. Line up and wait. Used by air traffic control to inform a pilot to taxi onto the departure runway and take off position and hold. It is not an authorization for takeoff. It is used when takeoff clearance cannot immediately be issued because of traffic, weather, or other conditions. Read back. Repeat my message back to me. Roger. I have received all of your last transmission. It should not be used to answer a question requiring a yes or no answer, in which case affirmative or negative should be used. Say again. Request a repeat of the last transmission. Usually specifies that the transmission or a portion of the transmission was not understood or received. Stand by. Means the controller or pilot must pause for a few seconds, usually to attend to other duties of a higher urgency. It also means to wait, as in stand by for clearance. Unable. Indicates the inability to comply with a specific instruction, request, command, or clearance. Verify. Request confirmation of information. Without delay. Proceed with approved instructions in a rapid manner with a sense of urgency. It is synonymous with immediately and expedite. Wilco. I have received your message, understand it, and will comply with it. Wilco is a contraction of will comply. For a complete listing of all aviation phraseology, Consult the Pilot Controller Glossary section of the Aeronautical Information Manual. The International Civil Aviation Organization has adopted the standardized list of the following words to use to reduce confusion that may result from similar sounding letters and numbers. You will hear these used to identify runways and taxiways. This chart can also be found in the Aeronautical Information Manual. This concludes the section on phraseology and communications.